Hey everyone, welcome. Um, my name is Monsi and I'm glad to um, be able to host this webinar today. I've got a great group of panelists here and I'm gonna introduce them in just a second, but just giving everyone a second to log in here and get connected. Um, we are here to talk about the USCC um, and in particular talk about Kansas City um, where we're gonna host the, the fun event. Um, so yeah, I'm, we're ready to get started and I'm excited to have you. Um, a little bit about me, I'm Monsi. I work here at the SCA. I'm located in Southern California. Um, I've worked with the SCA for 10 years now, so it's been a little bit of time. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with the Barista Guild and the competitions um, are a big part of that, of course, and of that community. Um, my first time, actually, one of my first times visiting Kansas City um, was with um, coffee events, and then most recently, um, the qualifying event back in 2016. So this is going to be fun to go back to a city that where we have a great coffee community. You'll hear about that in a little bit of the call a little bit later. Um, first, let me introduce our panelists for you. Um, so we're going to, you probably are seeing their faces across, but you'll see them on this slide as well. Um, we have Sarah Leslie, our chair of the Barista Guild Executive Council, um, Adam Jackson Bay, Miguel, our chair of the competitions committee. Um, we have Giselle, she's right here too. You'll hear from her in a little bit. Dean is here as well. Um, I think you'll see him or maybe he's just joining. Um, Habte is here as well and maybe you'll see him in a second. Ellie from SCA, my colleague, there she is with a pretty background in her <laughs> picture there. Um, and then we also will have a, a little announcement, like a little testimonial from Holly, who couldn't join us, but is very much part of the KC community. So um, welcome to all of our panelists, and thank you for joining us. Um, a little bit about my experience with Kansas City. I wanted to kick us off right before Miguel takes the, the floor here. Um, when we visited in 2016 and we had our qualifying event, there were two special moments about Kansas City and I, I wanna share them. One was that we had the very first Coffee Woman event and I was super excited that I got to participate and support the development of that. Um, we had a great turnout, um, not just because the qualifiers were in town, but I think the community from Kansas City really showed up and um, really showed us their support for having such a, I think, inaugural event to kick it off. It was a great location. Um, the other thing that happened that very same week um, was the inauguration of the Coffee Technicians Guild. So it was a special city. Um, I think there's been a lot of coffee happenings that um, have taken place there. It's um, small enough where we can get around the city and I've had great food and, and restaurants and I am gonna ask the panelists to um, speak to some of their favorite either food experiences or um, something memorable about KC. I, you might hear from the community where they'd speak to this is the KC way. So I want them to um, tell us about their experience around that. Um, so let's move forward and I'm going to kick it off to Miguel, who's going to give us a little bit more background on the competitions committee and what, what we're going to be looking forward to. Hi, everybody. I'm super excited to be going back to Kansas City. Uh, it's been since like 2016, uh, since we've been there and the community there is just like amazing. Uh, some really awesome stuff happening for the USCC. Um, is we're adding a new competition, which is pretty great, uh, which we'll be launching off at the qualifiers this year in Denver and in Nashville, and that's the Coffee and Good Spirits competition, which is super fun. Um, <clears throat> this is also like a really fun and amazing opportunity for the US coffee community, because as you all know that uh, WBC will be hosted in Boston, uh, for Expo, and this is going to be our standalone event um, for the national championships, uh, which hasn't happened since 2015. 
when WBC was in Seattle. Uh, and we had the U.S. Championships in Portland, which was, again, I think when we have not the craziness of Expo uh, surrounded us, like we can definitely kind of come inwards uh, as an amazing coffee community uh, within the U.S. So I'm really excited to be going back to Kansas City uh, for our national championships. Uh, so Coffee and Good Spirits is coming out at us, uh, which will be super fun. Uh, again, there'll be more um, information coming through, with, especially with the rules and regulations, how to get involved and judge uh, at the qualifiers and moving into the USCC. Uh, another awesome competition is the Roasters competition. Uh, that's going to be changing a little bit from last year, but still very much on par with showcasing what roasters can do all around in the U.S. and potentially go into the world competitions. Uh, and then, yeah, our standard um, amazing lineup of U.S. Barista Championship, uh, U.S. Brewers Cup, and Cup Tasters uh, are all going to be uh, rocking and rolling in Kansas City uh, for those national championships moving forward either to Boston uh, or Berlin um, in June for World of Coffee. Uh, so yeah, I think that's kind of like the biggest, the big rundown of all the hard work that we've been doing um, with every committee um, behind each uh, competition. Uh, and yeah, we're super excited to have gone from prelims, which the last one got hosted in Rancho Cucamonga last weekend. Uh, and we're looking forward for the qualifiers and the road to the USCC. Um, so yeah, qualifying events uh, in Denver. Uh, beginning of December and then Nashville in January. Uh, both amazing coffee cities. Uh, Denver's a little bit better, uh, but <laughs> that's only because I'm biased. Yeah, I know. I live here. It's great. It's an amazing coffee community. Uh, Nashville's also amazing too. Uh, you'll catch me at both. Um, but yeah, hit me up for some really great recommendations in Denver for sure. Uh, and yeah, excited to be hosting um, the coffee community here uh, a mile high. So make sure you bring in some oxygen tanks because it gets pretty thin, but it's amazing. Fresh air. I think that's, yeah. Oh, uh, at the qualifiers, yeah, we'll be hosting, um, again, all the main competitions that we'll be having in the USCC. Uh, the rules are gonna be slightly different uh, just to accommodate more baristas um, and competitors to be able to showcase what they have. Um, so rules and regs will be um, presented on the website soon. Um, so get those down and then yeah, Coffee Good Spirits, uh, Roasters Guild, Cup Tasters, uh, Brewers and Barista uh, at both qualifying events. So uh, really excited to make that happen. Thank you, Miguel. I am excited about the Coffee and Good Spirits. This is. Remind me again, this is the first time we've ever done that in the US, right? To have that at our qualifying in USCC. The you, uh, coffee, coffee and good spirits? And good spirits? Yeah. 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 So that's gonna be yeah, this an is, uh, exciting the first time addition. We've ever done it. Uh, the winners of the, sorry, I'm cutting out. <laughs> that's okay. What was that? No, keep going. Oh, yeah, no, uh, it's just really exciting. Uh, yeah, we've never hosted Coffee and Good Spirits in the U.S. Uh, it's always been kind of difficult to do the alcohol thing with the coffee thing, uh, with our, uh, yeah, with uh, sites and things like that. But uh, FDA has done an amazing job uh, to bring this competition forward uh, for the first time ever, and time ever. And this year will be kind of a trial run, and then next year, uh, Potentially, we'll send uh, a champion to the world level. Awesome. Thank you, Miguel. Um, so we'll look forward to the two qualifying events, as Miguel already covered, that we just finished off our, our preliminary schedule. Um, so the next um, event for the U.S. Um, competitions group is going to be Denver in December, and then January is going to be Nashville. So we're looking forward to both of those. If you can see the slides here, there's beautiful skylines of both of them. Um, and I'm excited to um, be a participant at these events. So looking forward to seeing everyone. And then um, 
after these events, we're going to head over to Kansas City. And so what we wanted to do on this webinar, which I think is going to be a really special way to celebrate um, USCC and Kansas City is invite some of our members in our community. Um, and we're going to kick it off with um, Giselle here. She's the lead barista. Um, go ahead and kick it off, Giselle. Hey. Can you still hear me? We can hear you, Giselle. I think Monty's Monty's frozen. You can keep. You can. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I moved to KC when I was, or about six years ago. Sorry, um, I had mostly moved here to go to college. Um, I'd been accepted to a specific program at UMKC, um, and once I was once I had graduated, uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my degree, so I was like. I don't really want to leave Kansas City. Like by the by that time, I had kind of found my community here. Um, I think once you find that here, it's really easy to not want to leave. Like it's easy to get really <laughs> comfortable here um, and kind of find your routine and stuff. Um, so, and then within that time, I also joined the specialty coffee community, um, which is pretty special in many ways, I think, but one of the things that I admire most about it is the fact that every, like most coffee shops are very willing to help each other out. Um, I've heard of other coffee communities that will like totally sabotage each other if they have like a, like a rival shop or something. And I feel like I've never really experienced that here. Um, so we're pretty tight knit and that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Did you mention a recommendation, Giselle, for the the group? Yeah, like for people visiting. Um, I would say, let's see. So, probably my favorite lunch spot, which I think is a little bit underrated, is called. It's a place called the Bite in the River Market, um, which would be super easy to get to by streetcar from the convention center. Um, it's, it's basically like a Mexican Korean sandwich fusion type place. Um, and there, then as far as like nightlife goes, uh, Sava is my favorite bar to go to. It's like a sparkling wine bar, but they also make amazing cocktails and the staff there is really laid back. So it doesn't feel like you're in a pretentious, uh, setting or anything. So, yeah. Can never go wrong with sparkles. Thank you, Giselle. <laughs> no problem. Um, up next, if we can have Hapte join us, he's going to give us some more of the KC way. He's going to explain more about that. Let's see him on the screen here. Do we have you? There might be a couple of people having some sound issues. Maybe we can move forward to Dean if Dean's available and we can always go back um, once we get. I am here, can you hear me? Yes, hi. Okay, perfect. So I apologize, I can't figure out my camera. That's okay. We, we see your face on the lovely <laughs> screen. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, uh, so um, a little bit about me. I moved to Kansas City uh, on and off now for about the last eight years. Um, and Kansas City holds a, a very, very, very dear place in my heart, um, specifically when it comes to coffee. I ended up originally transferring from Starbucks uh, in Tampa, Florida, up to KC. And it's um, actually where I became introduced to the idea of specialty coffee. Um, I was a little burnt out uh, working at a drive-thru um, and really wanted to explore a little more like what what is coffee. Um, and so from there, I just started just venturing around the city, um, ran into a little shop in a very small town called uh, uh, Raymore. Ben, did I get that right or is it Raytown? 
I, I can't believe I can't remember it. I apologize. Uh, but the shop was called Benetti's and um, my wife and I spent about three and a half, four hours uh, talking with one of the baristas behind there. And it was at that point that I was like, oh man, like I, I need to know more about this. And uh, ended up working at a few cafes in, in KC. And um, then all of a sudden this whirlwind of like the perfect storm ended up happening in the city where um, Jason Burton from the lab ended up coming on board and Marty and Tootie Rowe um, started uh, about the coffee as well. And it created this kind of little collaborative hub where everyone could kind of come together um, and not be on each other's turf per se. And uh, it really created something very unique and very special. And it was, it kind of felt to me uh, just this uh, identifiable, um, like this is KC coffee community. Um, and I, the values of, I think just this region in general is like comfort and familiarity and hospitality. Um, and so it's also where I became uh, introduced to the idea of like local food and beverage scenes. Um, and I would say that Kansas City has a fairly eclectic uh, uh, food and beverage scene as far as like what it offers. Um, thanks, Jason, it is right down. Um, thanks, Tootie. <laughs> And uh, and so like I feel like there's there's something it it feels just like a little big city. It's really 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 easy to navigate. It's really easy to explore, and it's really easy to find really really great things to to eat and drink. Um, so for me, um, with Kansas City being the host city, like it it really means a lot. Um, you know, I I think this is a very special city. I think it uh, just exudes hospitality. Um, and camaraderie and just wanting to literally welcome everyone it can. Um, so I'm excited for, for, for people that uh, who are coming back and also for people who haven't been here to hopefully ex have the same experience as I have. Thank you, Dean. No, I love that. Um, would you wanna recommend one or two of your favorites? Yeah, certainly. Um, I think most, uh, I really love La Bodega. Uh, it's a tapas restaurant. It's it's really not far away. It's been established in, in Kansas City for about over a decade now and has really great vegetarian options or, uh, and, you know, for those who eat meat, uh, some of the best uh, steak I've had as well. Thank you. I appreciate thank the you. vegetarian recommendation. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that Holly couldn't join us, so what we do have from Holly is an amazing quote here that I'd be happy to um, read off. And just, uh, I mean, everyone in Kansas City obviously knows Holly. I think Holly's been around our competitions community for a very long time. And I know in particular when I was out there um, for the qualifying events, um, she was just... Um, incredible in terms of being resourceful and getting the community to engage and participate. So um, I'm glad that we have people like Holly in our communities. I think she offers a lot um, in terms of exhilarating the collaboration that we seek in the coffee community. So um, here's her quote that she's offered um, for all of us to see, and you'll see it on the screen, but I'll read it off. In all of my coffee travels, I can say that I've never experienced anything quite like Kansas City's tight-knit coffee community. It's not just because I'm on the inside. Over the years, we have matured, becoming more open and inclusive, adaptive mm -hmm. and absorbent, respectful and accepting of what comes our way. I'll give you all a second to read that. And then the next one that she offered was, a perfect example is the 2016 USCC qualifier. As a community, we came together wanting to create an event that was put on by all of us for the coffee people coming in from all corners of the country. Most every roaster and cafe in the entire KC community participated. So, I mean, you've heard that from so many people. There's one more slide here. Some provided supplies, some funds, some volunteered their time, some brewed up coffee to share, 
but as an organizer for the event, it was incredibly easy to get everything we needed. All we had to do was ask. We were met with enthusiastic generosity. That is just the KC way. Hmm. So, I mean, I think all of Giselle and Dean also um, supported these same um, themes of collaboration, community. There's uh, a vibe in the city that just speaks to everyone getting along and working together. And that makes it even more exciting to be there. And then the great food and um, drink options are just uh, also a, a fun way to also celebrate the city as well. So thank you. Um, I don't know if we had any luck getting Habte back on. So I just wanted to give him an option to to express his um, thoughts and points of view. I know he was an invited guest for this as well. If we didn't get that working, that's okay. We can always talk to him in person when we're all there. Okay, so then let's go ahead and move on. Um, the next person up here, or actually we're gonna go back We're talking about Kansas City next, right? We can go on to the next slide. Perfect. So here we go. Okay, so we're gonna just talk about Kansas City in general, like what we are going to be looking at. We have the convention mm -hmm. center. Go ahead, can we hear you? I don't think I heard you, sorry. I'm gonna keep going. Um, we're gonna be in the ballroom in the convention center. Um, and if you've ever been to a competition before, at least our competitions um, either at the expo or if you were back um, at any of our other um, events, you will notice that we've had a exciting element called the Roaster Village. It's, um, it's, it's beautifully, an opportunity for the local roasters to be involved and um, showcase their their craft um, we have a marketplace as well um, and so these are the elements of the USCC in addition to all the competitions that Miguel spoke to earlier um, there is a hotel this is all information that's on the website but just making sure that everybody knows there is a hotel that's already on um, and Mel, if we can hear you, I would love for you to jump in, but I couldn't hear you. So it could have been my side. Hey, I'm here. Yep. Perfect. You're doing a great job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so we're going to be in the Kansas City uh, Convention Center at the ballroom. Like Monty said, it's an absolutely beautiful space. Um, and it looks out onto this really gorgeous green area and also out at the um, Symphony Hall um there and like Monty said we have all the competitions something that we'll have that's unique to this year is the on-site roasting which will be visible to all attendees so you'll be able to see the competitors live roasting um roaster village and market spaces will be available so if you know of anybody that wants to snag one of those um limited spots please go ahead and uh let us know reach out to us um and, you know, as Monty said, the hotel is the Aladdin Hotel. We're still working on a contract, but um, information is coming soon. It is literally two blocks away from the ballroom where the event is going to be at. It's also connected to the con convention center via an underground garage. So say it's raining or say you have, um, you know, equipment that you're competing with, you can just roll it straight to the convention center from your hotel. Um, 22 miles from the KC airport. And if we can move on to the next slide. Um, uh, transportation in the city is uh, your typical Lyft and Uber is available. There is public transportation uh, via Ride KC. They have a, an array of different um, options. There is a, um, a newly built and it's operating um, light rail that 
that travels within the city. And once you buy a ride KC pass, you can, you can ride that complimentary. And just kind of, kind of interesting too, I mean, it is right in the middle of our country. So it's easily accessible to all of these major cities via driving. It might be um, a little bit of a hike to Minnesota, but if you can, you can make it there uh, driving. So just encourage anybody in the local area or just your colleagues, your friends, um, to just you know jump, jump in the car and drive out. That'd be awesome. And then some fun facts that was put together by our uh, very own Ben Health. Um, 20, <laughs> there's 24 breweries, lots of distilleries, which will be great with the coffee and good spirits. We really want to get out there and let them know that this competition is happening and encourage them to come out. Uh, there are more barbecue restaurants per capita than any other city in the United States, which is absolutely fantastic for me. Um, love that. <laughs> um, but free modern streetcar that runs through the downtown area, which is included in your KC Pass if you decide to go there. Um, houses the only museum in the world dedicated to the history of African American baseball, which is very neat. Where Walt Disney opened his first studio and created Mickey Mouse. <laughs> For all those Disney fans out there. Second largest underground storage system in the world, which is actually kind of a new thing that I did not know about and really interesting. And um, you can check it out, but many coffee importers and roasters store their coffee in these caves. So maybe we can get an underground cave tour from then. And then arts and culture organizations produce 279 million in economic impact, which we, you know, we're all artists at heart. So I love that. I think there might be some more fun facts, but I think that pretty much rounds them up. So with now, that, um, said, Giselle I'm going to pass it over to Ellie. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that Giselle offered that um, the streetcar that travels in the river market um, and through downtown. Special tip and insight. And now over to Ellie. Thank you. What Monty said is that that streetcar is free for everyone. You cut out like just at the free part. So I wanted to make sure. Free, free, free. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the event site criteria um, process. So for many of you, this is something that um, a lot of folks in the barista competition community and beyond have been following very closely. So the SCA, at the request of our members, developed an event site criteria process through consultation of primarily an ad hoc committee of volunteers and staff. And there were about 25 people involved in this ad hoc committee that worked on developing the process in roughly January through March of 2018. So the rest, the remainder of this year, we've actually been using it and it's still very new. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to report on a successful, um, successful process for this Kansas City site, although it was one of the few places that early on has turned up some things that forced us or um, I shouldn't say forced, I just mean like the process flagged it so that we could um, research things a little more closely. And that's definitely what we want to do. And it's a good way of showing that the process is working. Um, so basically, the event site criteria um, are divided in two parts. So the first part is the uh, dealing with SEA's values and our commitment to human rights and the safety of our participants at SEA's events. And there's more detail on this available in several different ways from the SCA website. Um, and I know that many of the folks on this webinar have attended others where we actually focused on the deep dive on this up to and including an actual white paper that explains every criteria in detail. And that is available um, at sca.coffee under about values um, and equity, diversity and inclusion. So for those who haven't seen it. So that's the first half. And then the second half is a set of criteria that are really specific to SCA. Things like um, the commitments we make in our strategic plan, what we, uh, what our members tell us is important, and then those commitments that we make to prioritize throughout the throughout the year and, and ongoing. 
And then there's an opportunity for us to set our own internal goals. And some of those things will be uh, universal in a sense. So one of them is looking at the growth potential or the strength of the local coffee community in an area. So these were criteria that we had to develop on our own. As you could imagine, there's no resources out there for how to evaluate a local coffee community, but we're really well positioned to be able to develop something that does exactly that. In the process of researching the event site criteria, which is a, the responsibility of SCA's Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Task Force. This is a volunteer group that also has a few members of staff, including myself, that support their work. Um, what we discovered was that there is a travel advisory for people of color that had been issued by the NAACP. This is a credible, very longstanding organization in the US. And so this was something we were very concerned about. So what we decided to do was learn more. And I think that the event site criteria process helped us do this in a responsible and transparent way. So one of the first things that we did was research what was available um, through credible sources. So the best information we got was through CNN. Most of you will recognize that as a news agency here in the US. And um, following the travel advisory, and we learned that it was a um, issued in response to a Senate bill that could be interpreted as not protecting all people equally. And there are um, the NAACP saw it as something that they had a problem with. So that was why they issued the travel warning. And in our research, of course, we learned more about things like the Senate Bill 43, as well as what this really means. Um, and over and over, we kept seeing the phrase, we're not saying don't come to Kansas City. And so it was a little confusing and we thought, well, let's start engaging people who would have some insight onto this. So we reached out to different volunteer leadership groups. So I mentioned the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Task Force, and then also the Barista Guild of America and the USCC leadership group. So these three groups, we, um, as the staff in the EDNI Task Force said, you know, we need some help on this. And early on, there was the suggestion that we start to really um, have some one-on-one -on -one calls with people who may be affected, as well as people in Kansas City that can offer some real insight as to what this travel warning means. So um, I'm going to turn it over now to Adam and Sarah from the Barista Guild leadership, who are going to just kind of talk a little bit about the process from here in their own words and kind of what that revealed for us. Obviously, we are going to Kansas City, and so it was um, something that was very important for us to not just understand and, and learn about, but develop some additional resources so that participants um, of color or participants who are allies can feel comfortable in Kansas City and, and excited about being there and supporting the coffee community and all of the different things that Kansas City has to offer. Um, so Adam and Sarah, are you there? Yes, you are. All right. Thanks. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, my name is Adam Jackson Bay. I live in Washington, DC. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And um, I am, the vice chair of the outreach committee for the Barista Guild of America. And um, on our last executive council phone call, we um, discussed like what um, that mean, the travel ban means and how we can best support people that are coming to Kansas City. So I think that we um, came to consensus that it was um, Kansas City, because of everything that Kansas City was doing and everything SCA did when they were selecting the site um, was like very thorough and we felt like um kansas city was still like a very great place to have um the competition and so we just uh, wanted to be able to support and lend like any like help we could to anybody that like would be affected by the travel ban or um things of that nature basically so that's really it yeah, uh, just to say, you know, we, uh, I'm Sarah Leslie, uh, and I live close to Kansas City here in Wichita, Kansas. Um, so, yeah, we were, the Barista Guild was presented with the whole report that basically shows 
every criteria and the information that the event site selection committee gathered. And so uh, being able to see that process and action coming off some past decisions that our community had expressed issues with, I think uh, overall the BGA feels confident that the SEA has um, listened to our community and understands um, that we really want to put a focus on um, making sure that all of our community members feel safe and welcome at all of our events. And so, you know, as a chair of the BGA, I'm excited to see this process, you know, take place and also to see this, um, well, that, you know, unfortunately there is this, issue potentially in Missouri, but it really is going to give us an opportunity to uh, be proactive about it and serve the community. So um, we do have the outreach committee on the BGA uh, already sort of geared to uh, doing outreach in advance of our events and involving the local community and uh, making sure that people feel connected and welcome. So we're excited to do that for this event. Um, and we're also happy to hear the feedback of our members. You know, if there's specific things that you think we should do that would be useful to you. Um, basically, that's why I'm here on this call. Uh, and so here to support the, the Kansas City community, which is part of the Brewster Guild, but you know, additionally, you know, we want to have a successful event where everyone feels welcome. So we feel like we're well on our way. Thank you so much, Sarah and Adam, and um, for once again, um, stepping up on behalf of the BGA to be a resource for members and um, members of the community at large. Um, I think this is a serious issue and it's um, something unfortunately that we deal with on a daily basis in this country. So we, um, absent the ability to guarantee safety anywhere, I think it's um, what the SCA is committed to is doing everything we can to provide resources and information and the BGA has stepped up in a big way to uh, participate in that, so thank you. Um, before we move on, I also wanted to point out a correction that I have to issue on myself, which is that I mentioned that the travel advisory, um, I mentioned the travel advisory, it's for the state of Missouri, not Kansas City per se. So I think that's an important clarification point. Back to you, Monsi. Awesome, and hopefully my audio will stay clear here for the next few minutes as we will start to take any questions that we have from our awesome community that's joined us online. Um, and of course, if there's any questions that come up, let's say you're watching this recording afterwards, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to anybody you see um, here, myself. Um, there's gonna be some options to connect with um, just our direct USCC email and so yeah um, let's see what questions we have going here for us um, so we have a question from Jen do you have any Kansas City specific tips beyond the usual advice for travelers to be smart and cautious um, I don't think it's Kansas City specific um, and I will let other people chime in here but for me, I think just a travel tip is always to be, you know, traveling in groups and um, doing things that I think are logical just so that you feel safe and protected and taken care of. Um, and I think when you have a, a buddy system going on or at least a couple of friends that you're always walking with, I think that's great. Um, but there is um, some people that would love to chime in here and I would I would love to hear their specific Kansas City um, tip, if that's okay, if we can pass on the mic here. Um, 
I think Nathaniel wanted to say something here, if we have a way to have him chime in. There we go. You're on, Nathaniel. Cool. Um, unfortunately, qualifiers every year lands right around my wife's birthday. And so in 2016, we were going to be going to Kansas City, and I asked her if she wanted to go to Kansas City for her birthday, and she was not excited to go to Kansas City until we got there. And the Kansas City coffee community was so incredibly welcoming. The city is so easy to navigate. It felt so safe for her as a individual woman walking around town, which she loves to do. Um, the food was amazing. The uh, the people there were, were so ready to just say, look at our city, look how great it is. And then it was great. And we did look at it. And I am so excited to go back to Kansas City, um, not just to experience the uh, barbecue and the uh, food scene. Dean is absolutely right. It has an incredible food scene. But also to reconnect with the people of Kansas City because the people of Kansas City make Kansas City uh, an amazing place to have a coffee event. And uh, they're the reason that I am I am pumped about March. Thank you, Nathaniel, for that. Um, Giselle, or if any of Dean, if you have any other tips for people um, for that are traveling there, um, in your experience at least. Um, I would, so I don't think I've ever really felt unsafe, um, especially anywhere near where competition is going to be held, um, or kind of the areas that most people want to hang out at when they're not, uh, at the convention center. Um, like per se, I, as a person of color, I've never really experienced anything that would make me feel unsafe. Um, any like slight racist comments that have might have come my way, I would say that Kansas City is not more likely to do that than I would experience somewhere else, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's no like specific tip, I guess. I have, uh, I think, part of. Uh, that travel advisory was not just that, uh, not just the review of SB 43, but it was also some of the more intense um, events that were happening on the eastern side of the state. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you, Giselle. Yeah, I do want to um, reiterate that where we have the convention center and a lot of the activity that will be for the competitions that is in a, a, a good part of the city. Um, um, and maybe Ellie wants to chime in here on some of the work that her committee is putting together as well. We're working with the events staff of SCA. So Melissa McGinnis, who you heard from earlier, is our lead from that. And she's been working on this and will be posting the resources being developed specific to this event to the USCC website. So we had hoped to have them ready for the webinar today. But in some cases, we're, we've been in touch even with the mayor's office. And so we're, you know, like I said, we're taking this issue really seriously. And so it's just taking a little bit of time. But um, really, I think the theme that keeps coming up is relying really heavily on the expertise and experience of the local Kansas City coffee community. I think that um, there's the people on this call and several more who expressed interest in even being part of it that would be a great resource to coffee people. And then um, some more specific resources about areas within the city and, and potentially some suggestions of um, neighborhoods and um, just kind of what to expect. So I think that will be coming soon. Thank you, Ellie. And then Ben Hell, who's also on the staff, um, is here on the call. And I think he can uh, share a tip as well. Yeah. This one doesn't have so much to do with safety, but it does have to do with accommodations. And many of you probably have noticed that these dates include St. Patrick's Day. And Kansas City has 
a uh, large parade that has been held for decades on St. Patrick's Day that will be happening that Sunday morning. And um, a lot of folks will be using that time to come back and visit. So you have a lot of folks coming back home. And so if you're gonna be using an Airbnb the, during this weekend, don't delay in getting that scheduled because those will fill up quickly because of that parade. So I just wanted to share that tip. Thank you, I love that. Um, we have some other questions and comments here. Um, I'd love to kind of go into those. Um, we, before we go into the food perspectives, because there are a lot of questions about food, I do want to read this specific comment from Taylor. He says, this is more of a comment than a question. I currently live in Baltimore, but I'm from Kansas City. I am very androgynous person and part of the LGBT community. While Missouri is a state that isn't the most forward thinking and accepting place, Kansas City is much more so. I feel safe there and adore my hometown. So thank you so much for sharing that. I, I really appreciate that perspective. Um, and you know, continue to give these questions. If, if there's some resource or some other things that I think this group can put together, uh, we have plenty of time and we're happy to do so. So I do wanna kind of put that out there. Um, what I can say is that there are some questions about barbecue, um, specific to barbecue. Uh, there's questions about barbecue like locations. So I, I, I'm gonna put this back into the panelists' hands to offer up some suggestions, but then also could we, get some vegan barbecue spots that, um, it wasn't just me, but there's a, another comment here as well asking about that. So if any of you um, from our panelist team or anybody else that has visited Kansas City wants to throw out some suggestions. And again, I think this is one of those things that we will be putting together resources for. So please keep those suggestions coming. Um, but if any of our panelists wanna speak to some of the barbecue spots that they recommend. I would recommend my deck if you want to stop by. <laughs> help that. I think uh, I think there are so many places that we're going to be able to help list when it comes to providing some of these uh, resources for visitors. Um, particularly, uh, we'll be doing a lot of research over the next couple of months in person to make sure that we can point you in the right directions for barbecue. That is a hotly contested topic for anybody who lives. Um, around here is recommending where you need to go visit for barbecue. But I will say, while we're on the topic of barbecue, that uh, something that myself and a couple other people in the coffee industry do for fun is we have an Instagram account called at coffee.on.q. And it's for coffee professionals to talk about barbecue share recipes and reviews and things like that. And so keep an eye out on that account if you would like, and we will be uh, sharing some recommendations, not only for the Kansas City area, but also for Nashville and Denver. And so you can find all sorts of recommendations for that. And I guess I'll go ahead and let you know that in addition to the competitions that will be happening there, there's a group of us who will be putting on the U.S. Coffee Pro Barbecue Cook-Off on the Saturday of this event. So there's gonna be a competition outside of the competitions where we're gonna be uh, inviting teams of coffee professionals from all over the country to join us in a barbecue in the afternoon and a bonus category of cast iron breakfast and coffee where competitive teams will prepare a cast iron breakfast paired with a coffee that they have to make without water, without electricity. And so that'll be happening on the morning of Saturday at this event outside. And that's just one of the many events that uh, our community is gonna be coming together to put on for all of our guests. In fact, we have our first meeting at Monarch Coffee, which is where Giselle works five weeks from now to gather the Kansas City Coffee community and start working on how we can make this an awesome experience for everyone, including food. We have a recommendation here from the always helpful Marty, which I think is Marty Rowe. Um, Joe's KC has vegan options, 
And I think Q39 and Charbar also have vegan options. So thank you, Marty. Marty is correct, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As this is a pretty big and important topic, in addition to the competitions, I think it's safe to say that maybe we can put another page up on the US Coffee Champs um, resources site or something part of that website so that we can all add in our favorite barbecue or restaurant recommendations. I think this is gonna be a fun time to visit some great food places. Um, and I love the, Ben, thank you for sharing the competition outside of the competition. <laughs> it's Tootie signed in as Marty, just to clarify. Oh. And that Judy hasn't happened before. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. You see how surprised everyone was? <laughs> Awesome. Well, I think um, that might round out our questions. Um, oh, actually, there's one more here about weather. What should we expect um, in terms of weather? Um, anybody want to tell us? It's March 15th through the 17th, so my 10 days out weather forecast won't tell me just yet, but <laughs> um, people that live there maybe might have Ben or Giselle or Dean might have something to offer here. Um, it's still definitely going to be cold. I would say I wouldn't really expect anything above 50 degrees for March, I would say. And even that I feel like is a little bit generous um, on the warm side. Uh, so definitely layer up. Yeah, we yeah, do it that. It tends to be a little home. wet. It tends Go to be ahead. a little wet too. Oh, sorry. I was going to say it tends to be a little wet as well. Um, yeah, it looks like anywhere between 60s and low, high 30s is where it tends to stay. Intercontinental weather is is funny, so we we kind of experience like bipolar swings when it comes to weather. Great, so we're going to have boots and coats with at least some type of protect our hair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if it is um, wet, I don't recommend this, but if it is um, happens to be a good day, are there any outdoor spaces and bike trails and hiking is one of the questions here. So um, if people know of some that they want to recommend, otherwise that's definitely something we can add to our website as well. I think that's a great suggestion. Uh, I can't speak. So, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, so okay. Park has some good um, bike and hiking trails, I think. And then um, if you don't mind driving out 15 or 20 minutes, um, there's a really good a really nice um, like park sanctuary in Parkville. Uh, it has some really nice trails as well, hiking trails. And for anyone that enjoys disc golf, uh, Kansas City has about like 25 plus courses. Um, so that's, that's something if you wanna get outside and do. Um, definitely Kansas City is a, a great place to disc golf. That sounds super fun, thank you. Um, there is another comment here about all of these events that we've been talking about and everything that we've been pointing to. Somebody's asking if there is a calendar of these. And yes, we're going to, um, it should be still, everything else is already on the USCC website. That's just uscoffeechampionships.org. Um, .org. And we do recommend that you sign up for our newsletter. It's on the same website, that way you can get this information sent to you um, in an email format. And then of course our social media sites. So if you use the hashtag um, US Coffee Champs or you look at our social media, we did, this was an announcement earlier this year, but, um, or just a few months ago that we have our own 
um, social media accounts now for US Coffee Champs. So I recommend that you add those so that you can keep um, in touch with us on what is happening and as we build more of the schedule out. There's another recommendation that it's not hiking, but Nelson Atkins has a huge, beautiful lawn to enjoy a picnic on. So sounds like a great opportunity to take some new friends and maybe grab some sandwiches and enjoy some, some sunshine, I hope. We're coming from Cal California, so I think we will have that. <laughs> that will be my prediction, let's see. <laughs> Um, any other questions that, or, or recommendations from the audience? Ben Helt was just offering that last year in March, it was 74 degrees and in 2016, it was 73 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So if we kind of continue on that momentum, maybe we'll have the same type of weather. We shall see. In which case, I think we should all go to disc golf. <laughs> all right, if there is nothing else, um, I think we can go ahead and say, give a big thank you to everyone. I wanna definitely give a special thanks to our panelists, um, all the work that um, the event site criteria uh, committee and Ellie's group has done the Barista Guild Executive Council for their support and um, Adam and Sarah who joined this um, webinar in particular, um, Giselle and Dean um, and Holly and Habte, thank you again for perspectives from the KC community. Um, this is gonna be a super special and fun event. Um, I think our US coffee community is um, in for a special treat. Um, we've had some great experiences in the past, but we're looking forward to make this one for the books. So thank you to everybody that's been working hard. Miguel as well and his committee. I don't want to forget you. Um, everyone, thank you so much. And um, we look forward to making this special for all of you. Please give us your suggestions and feedback. We've already gotten some great ideas from this call itself that we will go ahead and update on the website. Um, and if you haven't already signed up for that newsletter or social media, do that and help spread the word. We're hoping to get as many people out to enjoy this. It's um, competitions are definitely um, the focal point, but I think many would agree that it's meeting the coffee community. Um, that's going to be the highlight of the event. So with that, thank you. And we hope you'll join us next time. <laughs>